What's up, guys? Welcome back to Malt Mondays. I'm Paul. This and I'm Mark. Brandon. Yeah, hey, guys. <laughs> I was going to cut in there. <laughs> and today we're going to be tasting through uh, everything from Macallan. Last time I had Brandon on the channel, we tasted through Balveni. We did. I wanted to do this because I rarely indulge uh, myself with some of these higher end bottlings, specifically because it's just more fun to share them. So we're gonna start with the 12 year old. Even though the cast strength is positioned here, we're actually gonna do it at the end because it's such high ABV that it's gonna kind of blow out our palate for tasting some yeah. of this other stuff. So let's start with the 12 year old Sherry Oak. This is 12 years in Spanish Oloroso sherry casks. So Macallan doesn't use any artificial coloring. So this is all natural color for all of these. Uh, however, they do chill filter. And um, these are bottled at 43%. I think all of them were 43 except for the, the cast rack. This is $70 for give or take. That's the 12, just the, the straight yeah. 12. Okay. Yeah. And this is about the same price as the double cask, but this is the quintessential Macallan that probably most people are interested in trying first if they're interested in Macallan or that they have had if they've had a Macallan before. I know that one of the first bottles I ever bought was the 12 year Macallan. Yeah. Yes, it was. This is extremely dominated by sherry. Very um, much so. The sherry is like, it's really, really powerful on the aroma. There's that that quintessential Macallan like iodine slash sulfur that kind of hits the nose as well, yeah. ultimately for this one. And that's in my experience is that's always the way that the 12 year is. You've always just got that quintessential Macallan. I could tell this from a mile away. Yes. And so part of that is Macallan has really small stills. They call them curiously small, Brandon. Okay. So these curiously small stills uh, allow a lot heavier vapors in the distillation process to get over and into the distillate. So Macallan just naturally has a more oily, heavy distillate than a lot of other distilleries. So that's part of this almost like chemically aroma that you get to it. And I've always kind of described it as like a wood varnish. Okay. It, it reminds me of if you've ever been in a wood shop and you're staining wood, that kind of aroma. It's not, I, I wouldn't say it's off-putting, but I wouldn't say it's inherently pleasant either. And and honestly, but, like I said, this this reminds me of like an iodine wash. So if you've ever had to, you know, uh, to, to wash up and clean up for a sterile procedure, that iodine, it's not bad. It's just vaguely chemical in nature. So I can yeah. absolutely see where you're coming from. With that, you also get a little bit of the spices from the European oak. There's a little bit of fruitiness, like dark fruits. Yeah, that, and that's the sherry. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's, this is what I would call a really divisive whiskey. I know a lot of people, including James, who I do the Whiskey Uncut podcast with. Great stuff. You should, you should be listening if you aren't already. Yes. James can't stand this bottle. He, hate, he hates Macallan 12 year old. And I've done it for people that are newbies to whiskey who haven't tried any scotch before. And I've had, it's like flip a coin. People are either like, wow, that's pretty delicious. Or they're like, wow, that tastes terrible. And yeah. that, that's not normal for like space side whiskeys. This is just very simple. You got that kind of vague chemical scent. You've got the sherry, which has a bit of fruitiness to it and a touch of spice. And that's, that's it. It's not something that you have to spend a, an abundance of time with because I don't think there's a whole lot of layers to, to, to break down. Right. And this is also a whiskey that I've noticed in the past tends to suffer from uh, consistency. So I have had bottles of this that were much drier. I've had bottles that were fruitier. I've had bottles that had a very strong sulfur note. You know, of the probably five or six bottles of this I've had in, you know, eight or nine years, this is something that I think is significantly less consistent than some of its competitors. Mm. So to me, Macallan 12, the aroma is a little weird, but the flavor is pretty great. That's pretty solid. 
the amount of sherry that's on it just adds a lot of like syrupiness to it. That it oil boy. Yeah. It 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 feels oily in your mouth. Greasy. Which is not normal for this low proof of a whiskey. It's a lot of those juicy fruits going on in the flavor. No, none of those light bourbon barrel, like pear, or apple notes. This is much more on the like stone fruit. Yeah, sort of stone situation. fruit, like grape, raisin. I would say it finishes, you get a little bit of the oak spice on the back end. Very much so. But but it's a pleasant finish. It's mm -hmm. not It's not too dry. It's interesting yeah. you mentioned the inconsistency because the last bottle I had of this did not was not quite this dry. And I have to say I actually like it a little bit better. So you said that this is a fairly derisive uh, uh, bottle. Where do you fall on the spectrum of love versus hate for this particular <laughs> bottling? It's got good weight to it. It's got good flavor going on, but the aroma is just funky. Yep. And so, I, you know, this is one that I would say you probably try okay. before you buy it. Yeah, and that's fair. The first bottle I ever got uh, actually convinced me that I absolutely despised Macallan. And then you introduced me to the rare cask. And I said, I might need to revisit uh, yeah. some of the Macallan line because uh, there's definitely something here that is special. Um, and so this bottle, I actually, this this 12 year, I don't, I don't mind so much. The, the biggest problem I have with them is that their whiskeys are good. They're pretty solid for the most part, but you're paying for the brand for sure. Yes. For sure. One of the things that I think draws me to the 12 year old, even though it is slightly funky, is the fact that there are not very many sher exclusively sherry cask aged whiskeys available. There, there's a handful out there. But even of the Speyside whiskeys, a lot of them are a double cask finish. And so if you like that heavy sherry influence, you're, you're relatively limited in terms of your selection. So uh, let's go on to the 18. Oh, man. Already better. Oh, yeah. so much better. I got like a green pepper note on this and it, it was it's just it's a little bit of a slight vegetal note i would have missed it entirely but the minute you said green pepper i said this is a hatch this is a hatch chili pepper this smells like hatch oh pepper. there you go this smells like hatch yeah. pepper sweet though in a different way like a condensed version of the 12 but that that oddness is completely gone, gone. the funkiness yeah. is it has disappeared this is much more even it's much more complex you still get a little bit of the oily sense of oiliness for sure and heaviness but but the that weird like varnish is gone. kind of character is gone this is now like like a sweet cream or like a, a cotton candy and this is a brand new bottle so you know this is one that's worth letting breathe a little bit there's so much more spice coming out on the aroma more baking spices you can smell more oak in the background and the sherry is a lot more like really dried out fruit, but they've definitely used really good casks for this. This is this is heading more towards like the, the dried fig and more towards like, I don't know, again, dried cherries, the, the more yeah. concentrated sense that you're going to get from a, a, a finished and, and kind of uh, uh, concentrated. This is just, it's really elegant. Yeah, very, very, very nice. <laughs> this is a jump, Paul. This is a jump. Leathery and it's really round and mellow, much more than I expected it to be. Yeah. Raisin, and then it goes into leather. And then you get oak, you get like cinnamon, like sprinkled on there. And then it just, it, the finish just keeps going and it keeps getting drier. So like the, the age is definitely present here. Mm -hmm. When the fruit doesn't leave, it's like spiced fruit the whole way yeah. through. That leather hits right after and then it just fades and you have sweet spiced fruit. Yeah. Now, what I think is interesting is compared to older bottles of the 18 year old, I think the older bottles were more like jammy. Like they were okay. more, they were more like juicy fruit okay. forward. And this is a little bit of drier fruit profile, which inclines me to believe that they're using some refill barrels okay. and not as many first fill barrels as they used to. Again, that's just my hypothesis. To me, it tastes a little bit more like there's some more of those second fill barrels going in there, which is a little more of just 
the wood flavor mm -hmm. and a little okay. less of the sherry yeah. compared to the 18 of, you know, 2014, 15, that, that time period. And, and this is a 2020. Now, the problem with this bottle, Brandon, is of course the price. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now we, and we, it's older. Yeah, it, it's older. They charge more for it. Okay. <laughs> so okay. when I, when I first got into whiskey, this bottle retailed for $200. And I remember people talking about it being overpriced then. Now, the entire whiskey market has gotten more expensive, but nothing has gotten more expensive as quickly as Macallan. And this is now $350. Okay. <laughs> See, like I said, the price point is one of the, because this is good. Do not get me wrong, this is quite good. Yeah. But we've had the opportunity to try a few bottles that are in a similar or lesser stand, uh, price point that I would say I like equally much. Mm -hmm. I think the Balvenie Ton 1509 is McAllen's biggest problem at this price point. Uh, it's higher proof. It's, I think it's just generally better than the 18. Mm. That being said though, Balvenie's style is a little more on the honey citrus side it's a little lighter even with sherry cask influence and so if you want a more dry dried fruit style this would be the one to, to go for so it, it's it, it always with all of this it's always going to come down to your preference mm -hmm. what your taste uh, profile is that you like that you're looking for here's the thing about the 18 i don't think i don't think very many people would buy this bottle and be hugely disappointed with it unless they were a real whiskey enthusiast who, as you become a more and more of an enthusiast about this product, you start to search for higher ABV and more value. Yes. <laughs> bottles. Yes. But, but to, I would say 99% of the whiskey drinking community would be very uh, happy. Would be this. really happy with this. I'm, I'm kind of surprised at how, how the oiliness of the scotch still has maintained, even with the lighter and more complex flavors that are present here. Mm -hmm. It still has a really great mouthfeel as is. This is this is just one of my favorite whiskeys, but this is the only one I've ever actually bought and opened and owned. I've, ha I've tried it multiple places and bars at people's houses and I've always loved it, but it, it was never quite worth my money. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very fair. So. And I don't think at 300, I don't know that I, I don't know that I'll be going out and trying to search for it anytime soon. Mm -mm. Good though. But it is very tasty. Yeah, absolutely. And as you know, even just as we were drinking that and letting it sit in the glass a little bit, open up more, I was starting to get a little bit more of like cocoa, little, cocoa, little, little cacao, cacao, cacao little, little chocolate. I tried to say cacao and cocoa at the same time. A little more of that like dusty chocolate note Correct. going on, uh, so I'm excited to come back to yes, this. Yes, so that's why I kind of put my, my, my little lid back on and we'll, we'll take a look later. So now we're going to go to the rare cask. The rare cask is, is a very, is divisive for a different reason than like the 12 year old. That was the advent of the non-age statement whiskey. Now, non-age statement whiskey has been around before that, but literally probably 2015 or 16, I'd have to say, every single brand came out with a non-age statement whiskey at the $70 price point, at the $150 price point. You know, like they, they all just basically unanimously came up with non-age statement whiskeys at similar price points, except for McAllen came out with one at $350. And so this is, could just be three-year-old whiskey for $350. Good for now, you. it's not, I mean, you can taste it. <laughs> um, and we'll go ahead and, you know, Let's taste this one. But, you know, it, it, it was a big, it's a big question because peop, although the age of a whiskey doesn't imply the quality necessarily, a lot of the value, the reason why older whiskey is more expensive is because it's more scarce. It evaporates in the barrel, there's less of it, most of it gets bottled younger, so it's simply a more rare product and so it its value increases disproportionate to how much older it is. So when you have a non-age tape whiskey priced at $350 and it could all be 10-year-old barrels, 
um, you know, as a consumer, we start to get a little suspicious. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> now that said, if I had one that was priced at 350 and it was as good as the rear cask has been in my experience, I'd say good on you, well done, and uh, be very happy for the product I purchased. Their marketing for the rear cask is that it's from less than 1% of their barrels satisfy the quality to be part of the rare cask, which when you have like literally 10 million barrels in your warehouses, I don't know that 1% is really that selective of a cut. Sounds really but, good. But it sounds really sounds good. Sounds good. Um, and they said that it's a higher portion of first fill barrels. Okay. Then what? They don't say. They just say it's a higher portion of first fill barrels. I don't know how you get a job as as like a as like a copywriter for like marketing departments, but that's gotta be a really easy job. You just kind of pick some arbitrary statistic or some superfluous like and no, just go with it. And just go with it. And you just say, uh, this is more rare than our other stuff. We won't tell you how, but trust us. You know what? The reason that they hit is because some marketer knows exactly what lies to tell to mm -hmm. click with the modern populace. When I first tried the rare cast back in like 2000, when it first came out, I tried it side by side with the 18 and I thought they were extremely similar. Now the 18 is much drier. The, the rare cask is a brighter whiskey. It's f like fresh citrus fruit. citrus is in there. I was going to say there's a little hint of lemon. Yeah. I was thinking um, lemon, lemon or lime or, or even like a, a yuzu, like a, a nice, really bright citrus. Yeah. It, it's a fresher whiskey than the 18. The sherry is less on the dried fruit side. It's more on like the strawberry side, the, the red cherry. You know, that leads me to believe that it's definitely got some younger whiskey in it. Now, mm -hmm. what I will say is the amount of complexity that's here and the finish, the, the way this whiskey evolves on the aroma and in your mouth and on the finish, I don't think this is mostly younger whiskey. I think this is, like they said, more first fill barrels. Mm -hmm. So the sherry is a little more dominant than the oak. Yeah. And I think this is some whiskeys around the 18 to 20 year old mark with a lot, probably like half in that range. And half of it is in the 12 to 15 year range. Mm. Is That's what it tastes like to me. It, it, it doesn't taste as old as the 18, but guess. The complexity is there that I don't think would be there if it was very much younger, if that makes sense. I would definitely equate this with like a 15 year. I can I can absolutely see where there's there's a good blend of 12 and 15, but I can I can see this being aged at least, you know, a majority of 15. Yeah. I, yeah. I, it, I don't really taste much in here that I would, that would lead me to believe it's any younger than that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think what they've done is they've made a whiskey that is ambiguous enough in terms of flavor profile. It, it It's good enough that people will buy it at the price point, but it it's not, it's clearly not all as old as you would expect for $350. Correct. Or else there would be more oak present, some different flavors yep. going on here bit more complexity. The funkiness still is gone though. Like it's yes. very clearly not, it's not funky. It isn't that weirdness that comes from the pure 12. Man, I love this whiskey yep. so much. Yep. Um, <laughs> it's like, bolder. I really like it because it is a, it is a little bit bolder. And I kind of like that in most of my whiskeys now and most of my scotches. I've just come to appreciate that kind of bright kind of mallet to the palate. You think it's bolder than the 18? I do, I do. I think the 18 is a bit more subtle. I think it's uh, a bit more like ephemeral and playful. This one's a lot bigger to me. I, I would just call the 18 darker. Okay, I can see that uh, too. The 18 is more like Gandalf. Okay, okay. <laughs> and the rare cask is a little more like Bilbo. Okay, like they're both, okay. They're both like kind of old guys, but the rare cask is like also kind of a little zany. Okay, you know, like... I can see that. It's got it's got a little a little wackiness to it. Yeah. It's a little bit more adventurous. Yeah. Where where you're 18, it's adventuring days are a little bit over, and it's right. just kind of there to support. Yeah. All right. Exactly. I'm on board. <laughs> Hooray! That's and probably the least useful analogy I've ever come up with. That's for, where you wanted to go for your whiskey for video, guys. Notes. I'm gonna start giving all my tasting notes in terms of that, just like Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings. references, or yeah. You know. 
uh, sci-fi and fantasy, nothing else. That's how it's going to be. Yeah. So uh, so your preference is the rare cask still over the 18? Ooh, I don't know that I can say it's my preference. I like them both for different reasons. I feel like the 18 tastes more like $350. I agree. Without the, Beyond a shadow of a cask. doubt, if you were to put these side by side, we just did. Uh, I would say the 18 tastes more like it is worth the 350. I think if I were to say I'm going to select one of these to drink daily or more frequently, I would prefer the rare cast. Yeah, the 18 is just like stoic. Yes. Um, yeah. It's just it's it's a more elegant and refined whiskey. It's more of what you would think an old expensive whiskey should taste like. Exactly. Um, or what you would expect. And the rare cask is just a little, has a little more pop. Pop. Finally, we're gonna move on to the Macallan 21 year old mm -hmm. Fine Oak. Uh, now, this one's interesting because it is the Fine Oak series, so there is some bourbon barrels being used, which is not the case uh, for any of these other ones. And with that, this is and this is something that I've heard disagreement on is whether or not McAllen uses any peated malt. Now, McAllen does make rare cast black, which is with peated malt. Interesting. Um, but other than that, they don't the, the, they don't really talk about using peated malt in any of the other whiskeys. Now, when you try the twenty one, and even in McAllen's official tasting notes for the twenty one, they mention peat as peat smoke. Now that doesn't mean that it's there, it just means that they're mentioning it as a possible tasting note. I don't know how it tastes like peat smoke if there's no peat smoke in it. There's peat smoke. But <laughs> it smells... It, it smells like there's peat like, there's, like there's smoke. Really light. Mm -hmm. Really light. Like, I mean, probably the least amount of peat I've smelled in a whiskey. Much lighter than Bo anything from Isla. I mean, th this is like... Five parts per million. It, it but it's, it's got, got that, that heat. herbal. It's got that, yeah. that vaguely uh, more you know boggy sort of. It's got that herbal note to it. Yeah, and it's just it's a really subtle layer that's added to this um, that I think to me really elevates it as a Macallan, but is also kind of a departure from their standard lineup because I don't get that in any of the other Macallans I've tried. Agreed. Now, interestingly enough, this this has a bit more of like a, a coffee note to it almost. Coffee and, and like a, a dark brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that brown sugar, that almost caramely, uh, yeah. that, that's coming from that bourbon barrel yeah. that's being used. Yep. So th this to me is probably the, in a blind tasting, the one I would not guess was Macallan at all. I think the other four I would at least put Macallan as a, as a suspect. I think the 12, I would absolutely. Oh, 12, I could, <laughs> I feel confident. From a mile away. I could do it from yeah. a mile away through through a blindfold and probably like with my head in a bucket. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you'd recognize it. But th this to me is the least Macallan of the Macallans, but I really like it. Ooh. Oh, that's so good. It's really so this is not nearly as fruity. Uh, I kind of expected a bit more fruit, a little bit, but nope. Uh, so what I get on this is like, what I would describe as like bitter fruit, like grapefruit. Yeah, we're, we're talking much more like the heavy aged, like really, really bitter fruits. I get like melon on this. I taste like, or maybe not melon, cantaloupe. Mm. What is that? What's the orange one? Yeah, you're took cantaloupe. Yeah, cantaloupe. So I get like cantaloupe. Grapefruit, I get almonds, walnuts. Okay, I can see I can nutty, see nutty, it's dry, coffee. Yeah, coffee's coffee's the kind of the, the big yeah. the big player here for me. I can see where you're saying grapefruit, but it's not even the fruit for me. It's like if you if I was just gonna zest it. Yeah. I've got I've got like the zest of grapefruit or a, a citrus zest. Yeah. Where it's that really nice essential oil that you're getting, that that's kind of where the, the flavors come yeah, from. Yeah, this, this one's actually a little perfumey. Yes, almost. very much so. So, <clears throat> I'll, I'll tell you, I'll wait to tell you the price on this one. Okay. Until after, because <laughs> it's gonna be a fair number. <laughs> it's, it's a fair number. And I still say, like, I would, I'd be willing to put a little bit of money down. I'll put, I'll put a dollar down that there's, there's peat, there's peat in this. Yeah. 
Yeah, a really small amount, but I'd, I'd be willing to say that, uh, uh, you know, for the expert that I am, there's Pete in this. This one actually doesn't, <laughs> doesn't taste as old to me as the 18. Agreed. Um, and, and that is a testament to the bourbon barrels. So Spanish oak is significantly more tannic than American oak. And so because of that, if you put a whiskey in a Spanish cask for the equivalent amount of time as a bourbon or a um, American oak cask, it's going to taste oakier in the Spanish oak cask in terms of the, the dry tannins, the leathery, those kind of notes. Um, and I think, I think this just like really highlights that because the eight, the 18 to me, if I was guessing blind, I would guess that the 18 was the oldest one. Correct. I was, I was actually going to make that point myself. I wholeheartedly agree of, of the lineup we've got here. The 18 feels the oldest to me. However, I like the 21 the best. Although we haven't tried the cast strength yet. Well, I'll, I'll hold my review till the very end to, to, to select my favorite. All right. So, cast strength? Cast strength. So this one is at 58.4% ABV. Retail price, $100, $110. This is the 2017 edition. So this is, you know, an older bottle. The newer ones, I would say, taste fairly similar. Okay. But the secondary price for this is has gone insane. Um, if this was an unopened bottle, it'd be worth like $400, $500. Really? Yeah. Which I I can, just from smelling it for a half second, tell you it's not worth that. So don't. <laughs> just don't. Unless... You're paying that because you want to have like an immaculate McAllen collection to flip later in like 10 years because you own one of every McAllen ever made. It, it's nowhere near a $500 whiskey in terms of flavor or anything. That said, McAllen, if you want to sponsor, I'm, I'm sure we can we, yeah. we can adjust it. It'll yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if McAllen wants to support me on Patreon. So I'll, <laughs> I'll revise my your review. My review of the McAllen cast rank. It's absolutely worth uh, shelling out as much money as you possibly for it. What's interesting to me is this smells younger than the 12 year old, and it costs almost twice as much, just because it's higher proof. Do you think it's worth it? No. No. No, no. Uh, from, from the first moment we, we kind of uh, took our lids off here and uh, no, no. And I've had it before and still no. <laughs> what I will say that the cast strength has going for it, it doesn't have the weird um, varnishy that flavor of the 12. It has a, a really nice intense delivery it does. from the proof. I would say this is the enthusiast bottle of the range. So probably if it like if you like McAllen and you just wanted to buy one a year, this one comes out each year. It's a little bit different. Um, I think it's probably maybe the best value in the range in terms of most other cast strength whiskeys from distilleries that are typically less expensive than McAllen. Their cast strength versions are just as expensive as this or more. It's fairly available. I see it on the shelf it's usually the every year, but... The finish is really short. Um, it's a little bit hot up front, yeah. it, it, even for the proof. Um, it's a little bit hot. So I, if, if you're into the cast strength stuff and you like McAllen, I would say get one of these and try it out. Uh, but don't go and buy an old one for five hundred dollars, please. Just don't. It's a it's a hundred dollar whiskey at best. I can see that. So, I'd pay a hundred dollars for this. Yeah, absolutely. Now that said. I've tried some great bourbons out there, which tend to have a higher proof by nature. I would be tempted to just buy one of the, you know, mid-ranged bourbons for for, for that price. You can get an awfully decent bourbon for that cost, still get the higher proof, and get some really wonderful flavors and actually get... I would be happier with my purchase. I mean, as far as cast strength scotch goes, I don't think young McAllen works at cast strength relative to... Um, Springbank, um, Lagavulin, 12 year old cast strength, um, Talisker, eight year old cast strength. Like, I mean, I, I can just list off a dozen cast strength whiskeys that are at the 100 to $130 price point uh, from Scotland that I think are better, better. than this. Yeah. 
you know, I think if you're just going to buy one Macallan a year and, and you do like higher proof whiskeys, I think it's worth checking out. Uh, but it's just, I don't know. I, I think I was super excited in, to try this because usually, usually I would say the cast strength version of any whiskey is much better than the regular version. And in this case, I don't think that's true. So if you're going to rank these, okay, first of all, which one would you buy with your own money? If, if you had to buy one. Well, before we go to that, I need to find out what the cost of our 21. <laughs> I'm going to say 650. That would be my guess. Yeah, you probably have to like double that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. again, I this one's not very common. And so I was not able to find like consistent pricing for it, but I've seen online, which can vary considerably from standard retail pricing. I've seen everything from like $800 up to like $1,500 for it. So I would say you're realistically, you're somewhere in the $1,000, like right around $1,000. This is, <laughs> this is, it was good. It's no, no, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. So what was your original question? <laughs> uh, so which of these would you buy with your own money? Okay. With my own money. I am always hard pressed to buy Macallan anyway. Uh, there are a number of other bottles out there, a number of other distilleries that I like more that I, you know, at, for the price point, I can get something that I know I'm going to absolutely adore rather than just really strongly like. I have had and bought the just plain 12 year before. I'll put it on my shelf and it's like, all right, good. I can keep that forever. And if I have someone come over, I can have it. And it's like, all right, I don't mind sharing this with more or less anyone, whether they're gonna know the difference or not. Yeah. I honestly and truly, <sighs> If it was once a year, I could I could see myself buying the cask strength. Maybe, yeah, maybe, um, just to have something a little bit bigger and a little less funky. But I think for the money I'm spending, I would ultimately be torn between the 18 and the rare cask. I like them both. Um, I was uh, pleased to try the 18, and uh, and really like we said, I like it. It's subtle, and I like it. 18 is so good. It is really good. It's so good. I really like it. And I, I like the rare cask for the bolder nature that it has while still having that additional complexity. That said, we're starting to border on the upper range where it's just too high for what you get for the rare cask. 18 feels older to me. So I, I would look at it and go, if I'm spending 300 for this, I'm getting something that I know I'm going to enjoy. It's going to feel really complex and really old for the money, if I were to see these, rare cask and the 18 would be the ones I would be most likely to purchase with my own money. The big problem for me is $300 is basically the most I've ever spent on any bottle. Yeah. Once you get over that price point, there's basically nothing a whiskey can do to make it worth it to me. You know, I've tried several really old, really exceptional whiskeys, but nothing that I would spend more than 400 dollars yeah. of my own money on um now if i won the lottery tomorrow that probably wouldn't be the case you know because m money would be less meaningful to me but as a normal person and by a normal person i mean someone who's obsessed with whiskey and <laughs> is far more willing to spend money on whiskey than the average person i just i don't i can't imagine spending more than that on any one bottle so like the 21 year old I'm super, super grateful for getting that as a gift. It is much better than these other ones, but only because it's a it has a nuance and a balance of profile that these others don't have. I would say the 18 is probably the one though that if you like sherry cask, you want something that tastes older, that's the one that you need to go for. The rare cask, I haven't had uh, like the recent batches. This mm -hmm. one's from a couple years ago. The rare cask is a little brighter. I think it's probably more appealing to more people than the 18 actually, but it's you're not gonna feel like you're getting an old whiskey. Yeah, you're not. It's, it it doesn't feel as old. Yeah. So let me, let me pose a slightly modified question to you, Paul. Uh, which of these money meaning nothing would you buy again? 21, 18, rare cask. I have to say, arguably, I would probably start with the 18. You would go 18. I'd go 18, 21, rare cask. That's probably how I would go. 
So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And until next time, I'm Paul. He's Brandon. Yeah. And uh, we'll be back at some point with another uh, lineup from, I think maybe Talisker we'll do next. That sounds awesome. Get some Pete in here. I know you're not the biggest Pete head. I but, used to hate Pete, but now I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So. I'm getting there. So hope to see you guys again real soon. All right. Cheers.